Hey there and welcome back again to Little Bits of Lisp where this time we're going to be looking at the case macro and what we use it for. Case macro is kind of cool. What it does, it's going to evaluate one of these branches, one of these forms down here based on the value of x. x in this case is called the key form. We can see it down here. Key form and a bunch of cases. These are our cases and this is our key form. Key form doesn't have to just be a single variable. We don't have to it can be any form, that form is going to be evaluated, and then the, the result of that evaluation is going to be what's compared with these guys to see which one of these we should do. Um, so in this case, we're going to evaluate x, which is going to look for the value bound to the uh, variable x, a variable and named by x, which is this local variable. So if we pass in p and 10, we'll see that we've got a couple of things here. We've printed out the value of y. So p matched, x was uh, the keyword p. So we pick this branch, we print it out y, and then print expressions return the value they're um, printing. So uh, this evaluates to 10, and that gets returned. So we see the 10 printed out here as the side effect, and then this value is what is returned. Let's switch out that keyword p for the keyword d, and this time we can see that we've doubled the value. d for double, 10 was passed into y, and so uh, x was equal to this keyword. So y was doubled. Fantastic. Lastly, we've got n, which we're using for negate in this case. So when x evaluates the, the keyword n, uh, we negate y. Simple as that. What happens if it's something that doesn't match? What if we pass in the keyword a? So we get nil in this case. And that's because none of these clauses matched, and so the behavior of case is just to return nil. Um, what if we want a default value? So what we can do then is we can do this special thing called otherwise. Now, when used in the final position like this, it's not going to try and match x to otherwise. It's just saying if none of these match, then do this. And we're gonna, in that case, we're going to evaluate the form. Nope, which is just a string in this case. Strings evaluate to themselves, so it's going to return. Nope. So let's go through our list again. This time we're going to do it with five. So we say p, keyword p and five, and it prints five out and returns it. How about D? Then it doubles five and we're gonna get our 10. If we pass in the keyword N and five, it's gonna go into this branch and negate it. And lastly, if we pass in anything else, like the keyword A or 1.2 or some string, we're gonna get nope every time we're hitting this clause. Now, that's all, that's all well and good, but maybe we don't want to return a default value. Maybe we just want it to throw an error, right? In that case, we can switch this out. We can remove this otherwise clause, and we can change case to one of the variants, either C case or E case. Now, the difference between them is both of them are going to throw errors. Um, both of them are going to raise errors, rather. Um, but the difference is that C case is going to return a correct is going to throw a correctable error and E case is going to um, throw a non correctable error. Now this video isn't about those two things, so I'm going to leave that for now. We're just going to treat it as errors, uh, and we're going to see what the, what the result is. So running something we know is going to work. Let's do test n of five again. It's negated, but as soon as we pass in something weird like the string weird, it's going to throw an error. Here we are saying the string containing the, the the character weird fell through the e case expression it wanted one of and here's our three valid cases and that's it that's the majority that you need to know for the case expression now there's one incredibly important piece of information and that is how it compares the result of this expression and these it uses the equality function eq that has a very important result, which means it's only going to match, or it should only we should only use things that can be uh, compared using EQ sensibly. That means things that are absolutely identical in memory, like symbols, like keywords, things like that. Numbers are not valid to use, even though sometimes you're going to get EQ is going to return true and nil in times that look really sensible, and it looks like, yeah, EQ works, it's fine. Remember that we have multiple numeric types in common lisp so it might be a big num which is an object which can hold a massive integer a massive number and it might be just be storing the number three and then you might have the literal three if you compare those two they're gonna under eq under eq those are not identical they're not the same thing in memory which means you have two number threes 
which are going to return nil when compared with EQ. Remember that for um, numeric equality, uh, we can use um, the equals symbol or we can use the function EQL. Check out the equality video if you want to see more of that kind of stuff. So there we go. Make sure you use something to compare it with EQ. It will bite you in the backside otherwise. This is worth remembering. But uh, thank you for stopping by and I'll hopefully see you in another video. Ciao.